This is WOR New York. You stay tuned for Lester Smith and the news. News in detail on the hour from the WOR newsroom. Tonight's medical bulletin from Research Hospital, Kansas City, says that former President Harry Truman's kidneys have failed almost entirely. The doctor report notes the 88-year-old patient was semi-conscious. His very serious condition worsened during the day as impurities began to build up in his blood. The doctors went on to report that Mr. Truman's heart function was adequate, although somewhat erratic. Now, let's prove otherwise at a later date. This report from the New York City Police Department is not part of a novel about heroin smuggling. Today, a spokesman for Police Commissioner Patrick Murphy said that 23 more pounds of heroin seized in the 1962 French Connection case have been switched for white powder having no heroin content. According to police, this latest amount was stolen from its Brooklyn storage vault sometime between 1962 and 69. And just like yesterday's report, about 57 pounds of heroin taken from the department's Manhattan evidence storage area, the same name was signed by a man using the signature Joseph Nunziata. Nunziata was a narcotics detective who shot himself to death last March. Police said tonight that they were not certain whether or not the signature was a forgery. Today, former detective Eddie Egan, who is now a movie actor, speculated that the $16 million in heroin could have been stolen by organized crime members. Egan then said that the last time he saw the heroin was in 1963, when it was used as evidence at the trial of smuggling suspects. Egan was part of the police team that seized the heroin cash, and he commented, I worked hard on a case back in 1962, as my partners did, my, both my partners. Uh, when I say partners, I mean the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, and I mean the New York City Police Department and their superiors. We worked very, very hard on that case. It took four months to bring it to an end. Night and day, day and night. And more frustrations than anybody should experience in five lifetimes. To find out what happened yesterday is shocking. I can best illustrate it in my own recollections of being a police officer. If you kill a cop, there's an all-out manhunt for the cop killer. And I guarantee you, gentlemen, there's going to be an all-out manhunt for the culprit that did this. It took a Manhattan federal court jury just three hours of deliberations today to reach a guilty verdict for narcotic smuggling conspiracy suspect Auguste Joseph Ricor. Ricor is a 62-year-old Argentine national who has his homes in Buenos Aires and Asuncion, Paraguay. He was convicted of conspiring to smuggle 94 pounds of the drug into the United States from Paraguay in 1970. Sentencing has been scheduled for next month. Ricor could get from 5 to 20 years. A federal court judge has fined three bakeries $50,000 each for conspiring to fix bread prices in the metropolitan area from 1966 to 1969. American Bakers, ITT Continental Baking, and General Host Corporation got the big fines. Ward's Foods was fined $25,000 because of its cooperation with the government. All four companies had pleaded no contest to the government price-fixing charges. More news in a moment.